Uh, good evening everyone, thanks for inviting me along this evening. Uh, my name's Ali Bowling, I work across regulatory and legal services. Um, I'm speaking tonight about fly tipping and litter, which is a subject that affects uh, most of us, not to say everybody in, in the country uh, in some way, form or shape. Um, it's not just something that happens in Bolton, it's actually something that affects every town and every city across England and Wales. Scotland for that matter. Um, so the impact on the environment, well, flight is not only in, uh, unsightly, it's considered dangerous and expensive to clean up, it's also illegal. And in Bolton we exercise a zero tolerance approach towards flight tipping. So that basically means if somebody wants to dump waste illegally, you can expect to knock on the door. We've got a team of highly trained officers who have been put in uh, through training to, to understand and recognise where offences have been committed, gather evidence and basically deal with people who fly to it um, unnecessarily by way of taking prosecutions against them. Our message is really simple. Your waste is your responsibility. Fly to be is unnecessary, unsightly and uncalled for. And not to mention it causes serious risk to public health. It also clogs up the batteries, you can see in that photograph there. It's a risk for arson, it attracts vermin, but also causes obstructions as well. So the characteristics of your typical flight are both well, selfish, the thoughtless, and inconsiderate people who have no respect for the environment or the people who want to enjoy the environment which they care for. There's just no need for people to go and do it illegally. The council provides a weekly service for big collections. We also provide booking waste service collections. There are two major facilities within the town where you can take your waste for free. There's also skip companies. There's also people that will come and take your waste away, legitimate waste carriers. So really there's no excuse for this kind of behaviour. People should take more responsibility for the waste they generate. Other areas <coughs> that cause concern for us are illegal waste carriers. Now this is a growing problem. There's a number of people now advertising online as legitimate waste carriers when in fact they're not. These are people who will come to your property, charge you a very low rate, take away your waste and will fly to that waste. And what these people don't realise is when they're passing waste over for cheap rates, that can then come back on them because they've not carried out the necessary checks to ensure that that person is legitimate and authorised. And this is where a lot of people get caught up being attracted by these cheap rates. It's vital that people carry out those necessary checks and we're doing our best to get that message out to people. But if it is a growing problem, we are aware of it and we have got measures in place to tackle and target these people who operate in this way. Other areas of road land laws, we've got a lot of empty properties in Bolton. We've got a big turnover of tenancy. So when one person moves out, another person moves in, generally what we find is some landlords feel it's a good idea to just throw all the rubbish in the back streets and expect the council to come along and clear it. And it's very difficult for us in these situations because there's a bit of a blame game to, to come into play where landlord blames tenants, tenant blames landlord. It's, to try and get to the bottom of it, it is difficult, but we are successful in, in some, some of our cases. Um, but it is quite challenging because we do need the evidence beyond all reasonable doubt to take legal action against people. <clears throat> so building stronger communities, educate, educating communities is fundamental when combating environmental crime. Residents and businesses need to be made aware of their responsibilities in line with legislation. And we're constantly looking at ways to adapt our methods, our approaches, our service to address the problems and to persuade people not to do these things in the first place. And some stats that are, that are on the screen um, <coughs> show flight of been incidents across Greater Manchester from 2012-13 to 2016-17. As you can see, in 2012-13 uh, there are 3,068 incidents and now at the, the latter end we're at uh, 2065. So we've been doing a lot of hard work to tackle waste crime. Uh, and we see the benefits of that in the reduction in reports. Especially around 2015 16, and that's when we started to modify the dental service and bring new measures, uh, which I'll come on to to tackle waste crime. We're also looking at property, apart from living on the earth, we've seen an increase. Most of the other properties have seen an increase, and that's because.
because they're not applied the same tactics that we are. Also, another important uh, factor to point out is the reduction in staff. If you look at 2011, we had 151 members of staff, frontline operational staff. We also had seasonal operatives, team leaders, and enforcement officers, so that gives a total of 191 uh, operatives and personnel in neighborhood services. We're now down to 81 frontline operatives, so we've seen a massive reduction due to efficiency saving reviews over the years. But overall, we're only down to 92 personnel in the service, so we're 99 people less than what we were in 2011. So we've had to change the way we deliver our services. We can no longer keep going around making people's way stuff. We have to challenge that behaviour. So even up to the start of 2011, same review, neighbor services were already in looking into ways that we could modify and change our services and modify and change people's behaviour. Like I said, we was no longer able to go around and just keep collecting waste. Fortunately, in 2015-17, we received a £1.3 million injection. It was a one-off year, uh, one-off funding stream for, for two years. And the focus of that funding was sustained standards of cleanliness in the budget communities and neighbourhoods and other spaces, but also introduced measures to change people's behaviour. Now, in doing that, we introduced five new behaviour change teams, which I'll go into in a little bit more detail in a moment, but that was a real radical movement and approach that brought in great benefits. Two trade waste enforcement officers. We recognised that a large proportion of businesses in the borough were not managing waste correctly because they had no waste contracts in place, which is a legal requirement, but rather they were concealing waste in council things. That was all being taken to landfill and the council or the community were paying for that. That equated to over half a million pound a year where businesses were dodging the system, so to say, concealing waste in domestic things. So we've tackled a large portion of that. Volunteer community coordinator. We recognise we've got a mass volume of volunteers throughout the borough. We was losing touch with those really good people who put in a lot of time and effort into keeping the borough clean because we've seen a reduction in resources. So we felt it pertinent to put some in place to reconnect with those volunteers to support them, to supply equipment to them, but also to promote their activities online as well. We increased resources in the town centre with some of the blame, and we also put uh, more personnel in some of the major parks over the weekends. And we made physical and environmental improvements. So areas that people felt unsafe in dark alleyways, overgrown, uh, poorly lit, we, we went into those areas, we assessed and we cut back shrubbery, we opened it up and we made that feel safe factor come back to those areas where members of the public avoided using them, it was now started to use them again. We also supported a number of groups in parks. Um, we wanted to plant vegetables and flowers and, and such, um, which was a really good thing uh, that we were able to get involved with. So the behaviour change teams, these were brand new initiatives that we introduced by combining our operational staff with enforcement. Rather than vehicles go around and trolling back streets and moving waste for free, we decided that we needed to get those opportunities to start challenging the behaviour of people in the communities. So, to reinvest in the service, we asked for expressions of interest, and we had five members of staff who came forward, we went through a selection process, and we felt they were suitable to be trained up to undertake all level enforcement duties. So, quite quickly, after some robust training, there was then knocking on doors and asking people, why is this waste here? Does this waste belong to you? Can you take this waste back into your property and manage it? Because we're not prepared to take it today. And furthermore, in some cases, we issued that person with fixed penalty notice. And these were ordinary members of staff who were litter pickers, sweeper drivers, bowling green ones. And they developed the skills through training to be able to carry out enforcement. So we're building on our service, we're changing the way we deliver our operations. And these are just some of the um, duties that the guys carried out. So it was cross departmental working, was working with housing standards, reporting dirty back gardens and other issues, educating customers around waste management, examining legally deposited waste, challenging the behaviour on, on the doorstep, issuing fines, requesting waste to be taken back in. And one of the most key elements was these guys have now developed into creating their own case files. So when then fixed penalties come unpaid, and there's not many that don't get paid, 
we always prosecute the individual. These guys who were picking letters and driving sweepers and now producing case files, so that sets up the standard for a courtroom and seeing that process from start to finish, which is a magnificent achievement. So some of the outcomes from that initiative uh, was over the three years we dealt with 2,579 incidents of fire ticking where people were made to take waste back in uh, to the properties and manage that effectively and responsibly and that saved the service over £100,000. Last year over 8,000 volunteer cases took place. So that was 8,000 times that we recorded volunteers, not only individuals, but groups going out over that period of time picking litter. Volunteers picked the equipment of 13,000 bags of litter during that period, which again was a staggering achievement. One of the key and fundamental elements was the created the Green Umbrella. Now, some of you may have heard of Green Umbrella. This was an organisation that was set up by the support of the community coordinators who sat a group of like-minded people down in a room with a packet of digestives and a cup of tea and said, right, let's form an overarching organisation to support volunteers in Bolton. And that was achieved and that was going from strength to strength to strength. And that is something that we're quite proud of, that we supported those people right back in the beginning and they've now got to a stage where they're almost self-sustainable. Another 3,000 businesses were contacted with regarding uh, trade waste um, irregularities, infringements. It wasn't all about enforcement, about education, getting people on the right track. But for those people that had um, historically not complied with the legislation, we had to take uh, enforcement action in a number of cases. So since 2015 to present day, when we introduced the Air Change teams, we've issued 854 fixed penalty notices fly to inoffences to the back streets and in, in some isolated locations as well, which is the £400 that I mentioned earlier. In the same period of time, we've taken 179 people to court and they were successfully prosecuted by the magistrates. A couple of examples there, um, furniture dumped in the back streets. All these people were offered fixed penalties in the first instance of my time chose not to pay, that's when we took them to court and prosecuted. So for dumping some furniture in the back streets that attracted me £105 fine. Um, you see some other waste there, a toilet pan, that was uh, £654 in court. Christmas tree and some large items were £684, um, a very expensive telly because the box was put in the back streets, it was given an £80 pound fine, short not to pay, and was issued with a £700 pound fine in court. This is um, something that featured in the Bolton News recently. Um, we discovered this in Bright Nets just off Ferry Road one afternoon. A wagon had pulled up and tipped off and drove away. Um, there was only uh, an hour behind it. We quickly started to search through the waste and found there was evidence to Haslingdon, to a property management company who'd hired um, some road builders to come in and carry up some renovations and refurbishments. I'm not checking the credentials of these people properly. It turned out to be, in a sense, cowboys. Um, they took the worst away. <clears throat> and on the way back to Manchester, they decided to dump it in Bolton. So, as you can see, it was a lengthy investigation. It took us over a year because, again, there was a lot of um, finger pointing from one business to another. But we got to the bottom of it. Two weeks of it was successful, and it was found fined over £4,000. So, that was quite a good outcome. And finally, the last slide, it's about our volunteers again. Um, the three ladies that feature in the top left hand picture, Barbara, Eileen and Heather, uh, there's another guy called Stuart Stairs, the founders of the Green Umbrella, and it's because of those people and the dedication they put in that we have this organisation that exists today. Um, lady underneath Amanda, I looked into her last week on Wagging Road when we was carried out some inspection. Um, she was working very hard, was out for an hour every night. Proud and passionate of the area she lives in, wants to keep it tidy. So I asked her to take a picture and do some promotion work around it. And then there's some other pictures there of other groups, Bolton Lads and Girls Club, Bolton Harper to pick us. We regularly go out, give up their own time to be able to dedicate to create a cleaner environment, not only for yourself but for others to enjoy. And I think what these guys do is absolutely amazing uh, and quite fantastic. And uh, I take their hats off to them every time I see them out there because they do an absolutely amazing job. So thank you.
happy for this in and uh, happy to say any questions. Uh, question as well. Thank you very much, uh, your team, all the officers, yourself, you did a fantastic job. Councillor Lyon. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, a fabulous presentation. Um, quite something that's quite close to my heart in, uh, in a way that's. Uh, you know, I, I would send more spread as possible, as possible. But I'm so, so pleased to see that such positive action is being taken and that the fines that are being imposed on the council are not the the fines that are being enforced, uh, are meaningful fines that the will absolutely serve. It still goes on. We, we do this a bit in, in, in Acid Ratio. You go back two days later, and it's a fancy loss, but you better carry on. You, know, you can't just let these idiots, you know, spoil the, the community. Just one more quick question, I think. Um, talking of this bit, when you get post here, this bit is there any sort of insurance cover that, that they would get from the council about the conducting this bit? There's not um, insurance that will be covered under the council's umbrella insurance. It would have to be an independent insurance that you take, you take out. I actually got some information on how they can obtain that insurance, and I'm happy to send that on to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So we'll get back to uh, all that members uh, once we get that information. And we'll, we'll send it out. Councillor Howell? Thank you, Chair. Before I say my piece, I thought we'd agreed recently that, uh, that the council would perhaps ensure it's the wrong word, but would cover people for some third party and accidental liability. Uh, but anyway, we're not looking at that separately. Um, on to my main point there. In, in my experience, if you give people the right training and you empower them to do what is right, they will very rarely let you down. Uh, and the behaviour change team that I'm going to describe are a superb example of that. These guys have gone from uh, picking each up off the street to managing their own mini business, effectively. And it's a credit to them, and it's a credit to the, uh, to the system. And I echo the chair's comments that this whole area of uh, enforcement and flight to be, uh, is to be commended. So, what's going on with and the rest of the team? Um, I have one question, uh, and that's regarding uh, licensed uh, waste disposal uh, people. Um, if I want to hire a guy with a bank to come and collect my waste, how do I check that he is a bona fide uh, waste uh, handling operative? Is there a list somewhere that I can check his name on? If there isn't, what am I asking for when he comes to the door? What do I ask to say? <clears throat> okay, there's two questions there. Yes, there is a list that exists, and that's the Environment Agency. So you could log on and put this person's details into the Environment Agency and the website, and that will tell you if they're actually a legally registered <coughs> waste carrier. Second thing is always ask to see the waste carrier's license. You must ask to see that and take a, 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 a record of the reference number that's uh, attached to that. In some cases, people may have adopted a, a waste carriage license and, and in those cases we will take a view where we prosecute somebody because in, in a sense they, they, they've been misled themselves by these people. But in most cases people don't ask to see that and people don't have these waste carriage licenses. Like I say, first week at the moment there's a trend of people on the advertising and we can actually see them bidding against each other and, and they're definitely not legitimate people. But waste carriage license and environment agents and you can check them. That was an excellent question, Thank you for that answer. Very helpful. Uh, Council Deal. Mm -hmm. um, on the insurance issue, uh, you're right, no, so I do have some information about the Council Meeting. Current third party part public liability. Uh, in my opinion, it, there's a um, council or a registered supervisor <coughs> following the volunteers. And following the um, review <coughs> of this policy with our insurers, um, it is the case that that will no longer be a requirement in the future. And that's the response to the case, so we need to just get that information 
synonymous and uh, being brought back once those conversations have finished with the insurance company. The reason I indicate this is as you know, Sherry, is this is something, this is a subject very close to my heart as well in terms of the frustration uh, that we all feel after decades of, of cultural change in the wrong direction. The cultural change went in the wrong direction. I'm not sure exactly when it started. But it got to a point, sometime up to the 50s, 60s, where people stopped cleaning up their own environment and started saying that's the council's job. It probably was the council's fault. The council probably started across the country sweeping outside people's houses where before people were doing it. People would come out of their houses and they would say, the respect in the street where they live, and they would then say, we we'll keep it clean. Councils for the best reasons, I'm sure, started taking over and doing the job for you. And it's only when the cuts were a bit deep um, that um, councils realised they could no longer sustain such a level of service. So the massive growth in volunteers is not a negative consequence, it's actually one of the only positive consequences I can think of uh, from austerity because it has led to cultural change going in the opposite direction. And it's, it's about people taking ownership of the community, taking pride in it. It's not somebody else's problem. And it's also about people being responsible for their own ways. Um, when, when you go to the market store, you know when you get packaging, it's your responsibility to solve that. Right? Nobody else's responsibility is your responsibility. And one good example of how that culturally, your way society continues to grow. There's just been some, some quick things before um, the country has all started properly embracing recycling, which is probably in the early 2000s, certain homes didn't start really having to go ahead until like 2004. Um, Households have capacity of 240 metres a week or 480 metres of fallout. That was your capacity. That's what we had to, to deal with all the rubbish. Now, in 2018, a garden property has capacity of 420 metres per week, about 840 per fortnight. A non garden property is around 375 per week or 750 per fortnight. So, for a garden property to go from 480 metres to 840 metres, almost doubling the amount of space that is given. To get rid of your rubbish is absolutely phenomenal. And the reason is people are just throwing away more rubbish than they have done before. And that cultural change act is also still something that's going to be tackled. It's a national issue, absolutely. Only the link of people that it's a good and it's bullish. It will have to cultural change really has to continue to be tackled. And it's about supermarkets being responsible, it's about manufacturers being responsible. It's about the science of things that can and cannot be recycled. It's about things like polystyrene and using other, other things that are, that are biodegradable. There's a, there's a huge amount of work to do nationally and internationally on this subject, but the public have got to lead it because the public have got to lead that behaviour change. And so the third part of the network is the behaviour change themes, which goes on right to We move crucially. From a council man in the van just going up picking up people from rubbish, the people chopping on the back gates, to a man in the van knocking on those doors, challenging people. And if you look at the figures, um, I think Adam gave us some more data, but if you've got the performance uh, report, which went through, it said that it saved the council over £100,000. And that's money that said that means we're not removing that, the residents are removing it. We put over £100,000 in the whole necessary work. Six years ago, we would have just cleaned it. We would have just moved it. And the first thing we've done to say, this is brilliant service, chuck some more on the back end. So, all that's going to stop, and I think the day changed it is definitely the future. This is the way forward. It's not about picking up and cleaning up after dirty people, it is about enforcement and education. That can only be the answer in the future because the vast majority of people in this town are sick to the back teeth and that small minority who don't give a damn for everybody else. So I would also like to echo what the members have said 
by coming down to see the brilliant work that we do and we can be the call that has to return on serving our cultural change. We just need that cultural change that has to pass through to the wider population. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Gill. I want to thank Councillor Harkin next and then Councillor Kenneth. Uh, my, my question follows on from what, what Rich has said. It's a, years ago, I don't know if this is the case, there used to be different zones where the, the glitz would be picked so many weeks in one area and then a, a different number of weeks in another area. And, and, uh, and I always thought it was counterintuitive again because you're actually saying if you and your neighbours look after your environment, you are not get much of a council resource that you need help. If you and your neighbours mess up your environment, you'll have a regular cleanup service. It was almost encouraging, like it said, almost encouraging people to mess the neighbour. And I, I presume, I hope, that that system no longer obtains because it was actually saying the more mess you make in your area, the bigger cancer you know you'll have. But if your area and your friends can look after the area, you'll get very little sleep that's going around. You know, I presume that, I hope, that zoning system is no longer with us. We do have areas that are more challenging than other areas, and in those particular areas, there may be a higher frequency of, of sleeping. And I, I, I just think that that's kind of not the way we ought to be looking at things, because you're actually encouraging people to use a resource, a uh, council resource, a very great capacity, because they're not behaving well as a neighbor, they just don't get that. But there are also areas that we focus a lot on where enforcement is yeah. in as well, so we right. don't right. turn a blind eye.
regulations that we need to meet and the, the legislation at this moment in time doesn't allow us to just bring people up and, and ask them to come in, into a sting situation if you like and mislead them. Without proper authorisation we can do it. There's something called RIPA, which is regulations that follows the Investigation Act and CHIS, which is Covert Human Intelligence Source. And we need permission from magistrates to set those sorts of operations up in place. It's something we are considering doing moving forward. It's very resource intensive. We've done it in the past and we've caught a prolific flight of it. And we're too frustrated to have to go against it. But as you appreciate the cost that we face, the team's got a lot smaller priorities. No, we are looking at addressing it. But yeah, no, no, I don't mean I don't mean to catch somebody to ask them if you've got a call. Actually, yeah. To ask them if they've got just if if, um, if they if if you rang them and said, um, can you tell me please, um, with the environment, have you got a waste license? And they have it, they think twice about going out because of their own check. Yeah. You're not going to put it in a catchment area. You're going to be asking them what the license is and have you got any number of the license, please, where it was issued. Because as, as far as I was aware,
So we'll be putting that option in for the members. spot. A second measure that's been introduced is the offence of littering from a vehicle. So anybody who throws something from a vehicle, it doesn't necessarily mean to be the driver, it can be a passenger from top back seat, the driver's liable and responsible for that act. Before we ask, we stop to the driver and say, who threw litter out of the back passenger window? I'm not telling you, there's nothing we can do. Now we can put the onus on the driver once we adopt that, and that can be a £150 fine also. And finally, you mentioned about the town centre. We do actually have a dedicated resource in the town centre, five days a week, uh, Chat Park Live. He's our town centre enforcement person. He deals with litter and offences, he also deals with businesses, trade waste, and all manner of uh, issues. Um, also, other measures we are considering putting in place, he will be involved in those uh, enforcement activities also. Okay, uh, a final question for Councillor Hassan. Actually, you have answered most of the questions I wanted. It was the point that Councillor Kelly mentioned about the actions we take against the illegal carriers, and particularly, you know, the people who are having who are advertising the service and they're not licensed to do it. You say that we, we not, can't do this because of the state operation. But is it not illegal to advertise a service which you are not legally uh, uh, licensed to uh, operate? It, we can do it, but we need to be authorised, and that's where we need to go to the magistrates with a ripper and a chase because we're forming a relationship with that person. We effectively become an informant, mm. and that's how it's seen in the law. So we need to be authorised by the magistrates. So we make an approach to that person, not to declare that we're from offices and ask them to come and meet us. <laughs> so we need to get that side. Uh, once we do catch people in, in, in the act of transporting waste from licence, we give them a producer. Much like the police would say, can you produce your driver's license within seven days of the older days? We do the same thing, and if you can't produce within that set period of time, they get a £300 fine, or alternatively, we can prosecute them. So it is something we can do about advertising and being illegal advertising, that that would be something that Facebook themselves would probably have to look into. We would be more interested in the fact that they turn up and they're willing to accept waste of payments, and that's where, once they do that, the offence is complete and we can address that. Absolutely. The uh, Vice Chair wishes to ask uh, a point of clarification. Vice Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, just an observation, really. We, we talked about businesses trading that are not correctly licensed. Is that a trading standards issue as opposed to environment? Could we seek their support? For people who are actually transporting waste, that's that one form of the trading standards that falls under the Control and Pollution Act, which is something that the enforcement team that deal with waste matters. However, there are other infringements that could come into play and come into factor, and that would impact the trade and standards legislation. Yes, we will, we will work across. I actually currently manage four teams for enforcement and trade standards, so um, yeah, if there was cross or multiple offences, then we, we sort of join forces and deal with those issues. Uh, Council, why has now indicated he said he's going to keep this question very small.